So you think you've decided to move to Lakewood Ranch or you're trying to make the decision. So what is it that there is to do here besides maybe go to the beach or play golf or tennis? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you nine things that I enjoy doing since I've lived here in the Lakewood Ranch area. Don't buy real estate if you experience allergic reactions to happiness, satisfaction, pride, fulfillment, contentment. Stop buying real estate if you don't like community, a sea of belonging, a diversified portfolio. Buying real estate may cause you to shop at hardware stores, furniture stores, and design centers. See your realtor immediately if you experience any of these symptoms. Hello, I'm Mark Bamig with Michael Saunders and Company. And in this channel, Living in Lakewood Ranch, Florida, we cover all the areas surrounding Lakewood Ranch, Sarasota, Longbow Key, Anna Maria Island, down to Siesta Key. So if any of those areas are of interest to you, just click that little subscribe button and ding the little bell. And you might even smash the like button if you get value out of this video. So we're gonna cover nine things that are kind of unique to our area. And down in the description below, I'm gonna put a link to every single one of these places so that if you wanna check out more information on it, you certainly can. So let's get right to it. So this does not include golf or tennis, pickleball, any of those kind of things, because everybody that comes here, if they have that enjoyment, they do it certainly. But these are kind of unique to our area. So the first one is polo. We have polo matches every Sunday at the Sarasota Polo Fields. I've covered this in some of my previous videos, but it's always nice to mention because on Sundays you can go out there and I think it's maybe a $25 entry fee, but people tailgate, they hang out, they bring their lunch, they bring their cocktails, and they just have a wonderful time. And it's, it is just a beautiful atmosphere to enjoy uh, watching the polo matches. And they do a good job of giving descriptions over the intercom to let you know what's happening and, and how the game actually works. Number two on our list is a unique area called Triumph. Now Triumph is what I call an above ground experience. They have zip lines, they have catwalks, they have climbing walls with uh, nets and things like that and it is right here in the Bradenton area so it's not very far. It's a lot of fun and the whole family can enjoy going over to Triumph. Number three on our list is the Circus Arts Conservatory. So you might say, what the heck is a Circus Arts Conservatory? I can't even say it. It is where uh, middle school and high school students go to learn the circus arts. And it's quite amazing to see these young kids performing these acts. Now I went there um, as part of a Visit Sarasota tour one day and we got to enjoy some of the things that they were practicing on. But it is open to the public and they do have shows and it's, um, it's quite enjoyable to go out and watch these kids perform um, all the trapeze, uh, all of the things that they do in the circus arts so I think that you would find that quite enjoyable. Next on our list is Selby Gardens, or otherwise known as the Marie Selby Gardens, and it is located in Sarasota, sitting right on Sarasota Bay. Now they have all kinds of exotic plants in there, and I didn't realize this until I was doing some research on it, but they have one of the largest libraries for research of exotic plants, and they say that people come from all over the United States and all over the world to use their library for looking up plants and adding information to their library. So it's quite a nice area to go and visit for a day. Um, they have a little restaurant there on site and it's, it is also quite enjoyable. Number five on our list is the Ringling Museum. Now, John Ringling, and you know the name from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Now that is also in Sarasota. And it has about five structures there. One is their house, one is a museum, um, one is the art center. It, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful place. And his house is called Catazan, which is short in Italian for House of John. And so when John Ringling died, he was actually broke. He um, left his 
uh, estate to the state of Florida and now they have redone it and it is quite beautiful place to go and enjoy. Uh, there's all kinds of things to see and do at the Ringling Museum and it's great for all ages. One of my favorite things that I've done so far is gone to the Peace River Tours which is over in Arcadia. Now these are airboat rides where they take you out through the Peace River and they give you uh, an education on everything that's out there, the wildlife, all the alligators, the different types of birds and then they also have a restaurant on site and the day that we were there actually visiting uh, they had some kind of a small concert outside. Uh, that was a lot of fun just to listen to the guy uh, give a brief um, history of the river where it empties out into the Gulf and everything that's associated with the Peace River. The river, you're on the Peace River. The river is about 106 miles long. It starts up by Marteau <coughs> and um, flows. It's not the longest river by any means in the state of Florida. There's a lot longer rivers, but it's got one of the biggest watersheds. And as you go north, it's shallower, but it spreads out all through. We have another venue up north, by the way, that you can go to. And uh, it's a little different than this one down here. And uh, like I say, this is a little more diverse than the Everglades is as far as I can with, you know, the different ecosystems that you can see. Number seven on our list is the Mayaka State Park. Now, the Mayaka State Park is located on the Mayaka River, and they do these big airboat rides where you can go out and go over the uh, lake there that they have at the state park, and it shows you all the alligators and, again, all the wildlife that's associated there. It is a 37,000-acre park. It is one of the largest and oldest state parks in the state of Florida. And there's all kinds of things to do there. There's nature trails, there's bicycling trails, horseback riding trails, and we actually took a couple of um, trips. One was to do the uh, airboat ride, and I think now they've retired the airboats, and it's just a, a, a really large boat that they put you on to take you out onto the lake. And then the other thing is that they have a tram that takes you through the park on the inland and talks about all the, how the park was developed and what was there in the 1920s and the 1930s. They also have a catwalk area where you get up and walk and you can climb up to the top and just see all across the park as you can see in this little video here. Number eight on our list is the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature. That's located in Bradenton on the Manatee River. And they actually have a conservatory in there. And they have all kinds of things. Matter of fact, they were even teaching, they were holding classes for, uh, I think, the first and second graders in there at one time, teaching them all about science and nature. They have uh, an aquarium in there where they actually uh, rehabilitate manatees that have been injured and then they release them back into the wild. But my favorite part in there is the planetarium where they show you the stars and the universe and they give several shows a day. And boy, you talk about making yourself feel really small and insignificant when you go in and watch that and then you watch them go out and out and out and out and even further and further out. It's it's really a, it's a nice place to go and visit. Uh, great, great, uh, great thing to do. Number nine on our list is the Big Cat Habitat. So this was started by a lady who was actually uh, rehabilitating an injured, it was some type of injured animal, I don't know if it was a lion or a tiger, but now all of a sudden uh, word has gotten out and when they find one that's injured, this is where they take it for rehabilitation. They have all kinds of animals here at the Big Cat Habitat. It's a fun day to go out and visit. Um, you get right up close to the animals. You're right on the other side of the screen where they're uh, enclosed. And that's a fun day going out to the Big Cat Habitat. So I hope that some of these things have enticed you to come to the Lakewood Ranch area and see what all we have to offer here. If you get good value out of this information, just click that little subscribe button and the like button. And I do get calls every day from people just like you watching me on YouTube. And if you have any interest in coming to the Lakewood Ranch area, you can give me a call, shoot me a text or an email, and I'll be glad to help out. My name is Mark Bamig, and I'm with Michael Saunders and Company.